Google Workspace is one of the best mailboxes to send your business emails from. Not only can you use a professional email address that matches your domain name, but you also get the huge benefit of using Google's trusted servers. This means that your emails have a much higher chance of landing in the inbox rather than the spam folder. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how to set up your Google Workspace email so you can start sending your business emails with more confidence. I'm going to show you how to set up your custom domain with Google Workspace so you can start sending your emails from a professional branded address, like for example, your name at yourbrandname.com instead of an unprofessional address like your name at gmail.com. <coughs> now, this is a pretty straightforward process, but there are one or two technical hurdles that I'm going to help you get past smoothly in order to get your Google Mailbox up and running. Now, before we get into the tutorial, consider subscribing to the channel for more helpful tips, tactics, and info to help your small business grow online. Now, with that said, let's dive into Google Workspace and get you set up. Okay, so first of all, to get started, head over to workspace.google.com. And that link is also in the description of this video. In case that's easier for you, just click that link. That link will then bring you to this page here. And then you just need to click the button to get started. Now, Google doesn't show you the pricing for Google Workspace straight away. It shows you that a bit later on in this sign up process. But let me just jump straight there and show you the pricing just so you know how much it's going to cost, first of all. It's actually pretty reasonable. Now, I'm in the UK, so you can see the pricing in pounds. But the business starter plan at five pounds per month is around six dollars US per month. So business standard is £10 per month or $12 US per month. And business plus £15, that's around about 18, 19 US dollars per month. Now, with any plan you choose, you do get a 14 day free trial. So if you decide within that 14 days that Google Workspace isn't for you for whatever reason, you can just go to your Google Workspace admin dashboard and you can get there directly by going to admin.google.com and then you can cancel your account. Anyway, the main important things to know the differences between these pricing plans for Google Workspace is that first of all, with any plan you select, you are going to have access to all of the apps and features within Google Workspace, including Google Drive, Google Meet, Google Calendar, Google Forms, and so on. But the main differences with the plans really comes down to the amount of storage you're going to get on each different plan. And the second main difference is when you're using Google Meet on the business starter plan, you can have up to 100 participants in a video meeting as opposed to 150 on the business standard, 500 on the business plus or a thousand participants on the enterprise plan. And one more thing to be aware of, if you are going to be using Google Meet and you want to record your sessions, then it's important to know that the ability to be able to record your Google Meet sessions is only available on the business standard plan and upwards. All that being said though, if you don't need to record your Google Meet meetings and 100 participants is enough for you on Google Meet, then for most small businesses, the business starter plan is going to be more than enough. And if your main reason for using Google Workspace is to benefit from Google's mailbox to send your business emails, then the business starter plan should be enough for you. Now with that said, continuing on with the sign up process, get started, Google wants to know your business name and then select the number of people in your organization and hit next. And now here Google wants to know your personal information, so your name, your last name and your current email address that you're using. So enter that info and then hit next. And now Google has given you three options. First option is, do you want to get a custom domain via Google? Second option is, do you want to continue setting up your account with your own custom domain that you already have? For example, if you purchased it with GoDaddy or Namecheap, for example. Or the third option is, do you want to continue setting up your account with just a gmail.com? which I don't recommend. Now, I've not personally purchased a domain name from Google before, but I imagine it will probably be a lot more expensive than it, what it would be if you were to purchase it from a place like Namecheap. And Namecheap is the domain registrar that I use. Now, for me personally, I think Namecheap's the best. I've used them for years and years, never had a problem. They've got great support if you need it. They're really easy to use. They're a trusted service and they have really low prices when it comes to buying domain names. So if you want to use Namecheap yourself, then you can get a discount by using my link in the description below this video. So with that said, since I already have a domain name, I'm going to choose this option here to set up using my existing domain name. Click continue with this method. And now you need to enter your domain name here. Click next. Now Google's asking if we want to use this domain name to set up our new account with Google Workspace, which I do. So I'm going to click next. And now Google wants us to create a username and password for this email account. So if I click in here, we can see that the domain name is here at and then domain name. So in terms of the username for your email address, I recommend using a real name because using things like admin at or info at, they're just not as trusted, firstly, by people who are going to be receiving your emails. And secondly, they're not as trusted by the email providers that you'll be sending emails to, for example, Gmail and Yahoo and Hotmail. So I'll stick to using a real name here and then enter your password for this email address. And now Google is asking if I want to receive tips and updates from them, which I'm going to leave blank. And do I want to educate my users? No, I'm going to leave that blank as well. Check the box to prove I'm not a robot and then agree and continue. Okay, now Sneaky Google has decided that they're only going to offer us the Business Plus plan, which is their top level plan at 18 pound a month. What the fuck? But as I showed you at the beginning of this tutorial, there are actually different plans, the business standard and the business starter, but Google being quite sneaky has not offered me any of those options. 
but don't worry that's absolutely fine at the end of this video i'm going to show you how to go into your google admin account and downgrade your plan to one of these other plans if one of these are better suited for you so if you're a small business owner then most of you are probably just going to need this business starter plan anyway and don't worry you're not charged anything for the first 14 days anyway so within a few minutes at the end of this video i'm going to show you how to downgrade to a different plan before you're even charged so just click accept for now now google wants us to fill out some information so our address and our payment method if you want to use a credit card or bank details so i'm going to fill out this information then i'm going to click agree and continue and i'll see you on the next page okay so google's now confirming that my billing has been set up and click to agree and continue and google says our subscription is now activated so click the button to discover Google Workspace. Google then asks you to agree to the terms. Click I understand. And now we're in the admin console for our new account. Click next. And now we need to go through a setup process. So click next to begin the setup process. Google is telling us that first we have to protect our domain, which we'll do in a moment. Then we have the option to add additional users to our account. If, for example, you've got other team members that also need to use this domain for an email address. So I'm not going to be adding additional users at the moment. Click next. And then the last step will be to activate our Gmail account. So then this way, we basically have a Gmail account on steroids because it's with Google Workspace. You'll be using better servers than the standard Gmail, which is one of several steps to help improve your deliverability rate. So click on next. And now Google's going to guide us through the setup process. And I'm also going to show you here now as well. So click finish. So the first step here is to protect the domain. So what we're going to need to do now is add DNS records to our domain in Namecheap. So Google automatically detects that my domain is registered with Namecheap. So therefore it's going to give me the instructions for Namecheap. If your domain's with GoDaddy, for example, then Google should give you the instructions for GoDaddy. Anyway, continuing on, click the button at the bottom here. It says I'm ready to protect my domain. So now Google is going to give us the instructions. So here it's saying to go into our Namecheap account, find our domain, and then click on the manage button next to our domain so here is my domain here click on the manage button and then from inside here google is then asking us to select advanced dns so i'm going to select the advanced dns tab now here is where we can update our dns settings and now click on go to next step and now here google is asking us to add a new txt record and the record we're going to be adding is this one here. This is the value and this is the host. So in Namecheap, if we scroll down, here is where we can add a new record. And now from this drop down, scroll to find TXT record. And the host is at, so let's put the at, at symbol in, which is indicated here. And then the value is this. So copy the TXT value, come back to Namecheap and paste the value under the value tab. And then click on the check mark here to save the record. Now we go back to Google and click on the button at the very bottom that says protect my domain. Now Google's going to do a quick check. It can actually take up to five minutes. It's going to check that record's been added correctly. That allows Google to then verify that we do actually own the domain and it links it to our Google Workspace account. Because this can take up to five minutes, I'm just going to pause the video and be back with you in a minute. Okay, now Google's confirming that your domain is protected and connected to your new Google Workspace account. And now for the next steps, if you're just using this account by yourself, Google is going to give you the options to set up multiple business email addresses for yourself to use using the same domain or adding new team members to your account if you need to do that. So click on continue. Now here is where we can add new users if you've got other team members that also need to be set up on this Google Workspace account. I'm going to leave that for now. And the last step is to activate Gmail to enable us to then send emails via the Gmail service, but using our custom domain. So click on activate. So now Google asks before we begin, are all existing email addresses added for this domain? Don't worry about this because you can always add them later easily enough inside your Google Workspace account. And then I'm going to click, I'm ready to activate Gmail. And now here we've got to add this time an MX record to our Namecheap account. So here Google is asking us to again, go to our Namecheap account, click on manage advanced DNS which is where we already currently are for this domain name. We're in the advanced DNS section. So go to next step. And now here, Google is asking us to go to Namecheap and find the mail settings. And from the drop-down list, select Gmail. So in Namecheap, scroll down and we'll find mail settings is right here. For the drop-down, we're going to scroll down and select Gmail. And now here we see this little message that says Gmail automatically configured for this domain name. Click save changes. And as we see in the instructions here, that is, is also what we should be seeing in Google's instructions. It's telling us that this is what Namecheap will tell us. So that all looks good to me. Click activate Gmail. So now Google is going to search and check for our MX records to make sure everything is set up correctly. So again, this can take a few minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and come back to you in a sec. 
And there we go. Now Google has confirmed that the MX records are all set up correctly and our new email account with Google Workspace is good to go. So now bear in mind, Google says to us here, typically you can send and receive messages from your new Google Workspace email address in less than six hours. However, it may take up to 48 hours before you receive emails in your new email address. So just bear that in mind. It might take a little while until it's fully activated. Click the finish button. And now Google brings us back to this page. So it's asking us to add new users. I don't really want to do that at the moment. So I'm just going to ignore it and click skip for now. And now check that your Gmail account is actually set up and working properly. Come to the little dots in the top right hand corner and you can find Gmail right here. And now we come to the login page for Gmail. And here's my email address set up here. So I'm going to select my new email address with my new custom domain, grab my password and enter and click next. And this should now log me into my new email account that is actually set up with Google Workspace using my own custom domain. If I open one of these new welcome emails from Gmail, the recipient will see my new email address with my custom domain is here. So this is the email address for this account. Now, as you remember earlier, Google stuck us on one of the more expensive price plans for Google Workspace, which is not what I want to be on. So if you're in the same situation and Google stuck you on a more expensive plan and you only actually need to be on a lower price plan, let me show you now how to downgrade to one of the lower price plans. So first of all, go to admin.google.com and you should come to a page that looks like this. Come over to the left sidebar and click on billing and subscriptions. And now here we see the current plan that we're currently on and we're on a 14 day trial. So I haven't actually paid anything for this yet. Click on the plan. And now here we've got the option to upgrade or downgrade our plan. And of course you wanna do this before your 14 day trial ends. So you're only charged for the plan you actually need. So I'm gonna to downgrade to this Google Workspace starter. Click downgrade and there we go. Google now tells you the impact, as they say, very dramatic word they use there, the following impacts this will have for downgrading is <laughs> basically your, instead of having five terabytes of storage, you'll now have 30 gig of storage. And these are the features that are not available on the business starter plan. So it's just letting you know what the difference is here. And then if you're happy with that, click next. And now Google is offering you a little discount if you want to pay yearly as opposed to monthly. So if you stick on the flexible plan, you can cancel at any time and you're charged £6 a month if you're in the UK or this is going to be around about $8 if you're in the US. Or if you want to pay yearly, it'll be £5 a month, which is billed yearly at 60 quid per year. So this is about $6 US per month, which works out about $72 US for the year. So select whichever plan you want and then click check out and then click place order and there you go now your account has been switched over to the business starter plan the cheaper one and you still have your 14 days free trial so there you go this setup process went pretty smoothly and that's largely because i'm using namecheap for my registrar they're super simple to use and they're trusted by google as well so they integrate easily with google so if you're following this tutorial and you're not using namecheap google should still give you step-by-step -step instructions for whichever registrar you're using but the setup process might be slightly different but following this tutorial and then looking at those instructions you should figure it out now if you've got value from this video then please do like share and subscribe that lets other users know that this video is a helpful one and also it really helps my channel out a lot and i really appreciate it now, if you like this video then this one will be a good one for you to check out next